What's going on, everybody? It is just absolutely blowing my mind at how fast this year is going by. Has gone by. It, it's it's over. Christmas is just around the corner. Uh, here we are, Thursday, the seventh of December, and I'm already looking forward to next year and booking, making plans for next year and booking trips for March and April and May of next year and. Where does time go? You know, you just get older and older and faster and faster. But welcome to the corner. Mike McFarland here, the Lake Fork Fishing Guide, owner of McFarland Fishing. Going to give you a free public rundown today. Kind of get you ready for this weekend uh, on Fork. So the lake is dropping. Um, some days it doesn't drop much from Monday to Tuesday, for example. And then from Wednesday to Thursday today, um, we had, you know, a little more of a drop than it's not much it's a, it's about a half inch a day quarter inch to a half inch a day which is pretty typical for this time of year clarity is remaining the same zero to one and the water temperature is also falling we have some pretty chilly nights um, but we're warm trending in the middle of the day warm trending in the afternoons so definitely warm trending and so that's when the bite's the best um, honestly the, um, unless you find some schooling fish, um, and most of that's going to occur down south in the basin area and the um, suspending offshore type deal in the trees and things, um, you might run into some schooling fish and have an early morning bite somewhere. Um, that's just the final end of what I would call a fall feast. Um, but when you talk about all the fingers and going up into the north end of the lake and going up into Birch Creek and Glade Creek and coffee and Long Branch and Bell and East Side West Side. It doesn't matter when you're when you're going up into the sticks and fishing the shallow water. It's it's almost winter. It, it's it's winter water, winter temperatures, um, and so some of the approaches are you know it's best for me, in my opinion, to slow down obviously because it's cold. Fisher are not feeding as often, um, but it's best to fish more in the midday and the afternoon when they warm trip. Um, Florida string bass love the sun. They love to sun bathe. Um, it's not uncommon in, in December, January, January, February to even see them um, in, in the shallow water in one or two feet of water at, at one in the afternoon sunbathing. Um, sometimes conveniently when they're up there like that, they can be caught. That's why rattle traps can be really good in, in this time of year from um, December through February. You know, shallow, shallow, big fish have been caught on lipless crankbaits, rattle traps, things like that. Your, your red colors are best, red and oranges, Sam Rayburn red, chili bowl. Um, and, and it's more of a, the fact that the fish was up there sunbathing and, and got some warmth, got some energy, and, and you got you hit them on the nose with that bait. So you just cover lots of water, and, and you chuck and wind over the shallow flats, over the shallow warming trended water. That's what you got to think. Don't just go fishing. Pay attention to what you're fishing. Think about it. Think about the angle of the sun in areas that that sun would really have time and, and banks, southern exposed banks yes, that, that get more sun. They get sun at nine in the morning and, and, and warm trend that are out of the wind, things like that. But honestly, um, you know, if you're a live scoper, the Alabama rig, which I've shown you before, Alabama rig, um, spoons, swim baits, jerk baits, um, those are all the baits that you're going to use to target the fish. Um, and, and realistically, it's about being good with the live scope. You're going to find a lot of those live scope fish suspending in deep trees in the mouths of the creeks and coves. Um, literally, the, you know, the trees that are in 20, 30 feet of water, those fish will suspend in those trees, sometimes right at the surface sunbathing and sometimes down in 5, 10, 12, 16 feet of water. But you got to find them with the live scope and then you know, fish form accordingly, and you need to be really good with a live scope to catch those fish. Um, it's it's very difficult. Uh, one of my friends was guiding the other day, and he said, it's so hard to get two guys, you know, throwing with a live scope. They're crossing each other's lines, and it's a challenge. It's, it's a very, very, it's like Michael Jordan, one of the best basketball players in the world. He can set up on a three-point shot and just sit there and put, you know, eight out of ten in the basket and tell you how he does it, hand you the ball, and you're not going to put eight out of ten in the basket. Well, with the live scope and the fish, the graph and he's on the fish and the bait and the whole nine yards, that's my best analogy is you've got to throw the bait right where it is. You've got to bring the bait right to the fish 
via watching the video screen. Um, it's amazing, but it's also very challenging. It's, it's not cheating. It doesn't make things easy. I prefer to just go fish shell. I'll go up and again, I'll, I'll sleep in, get myself a warm breakfast, good coffee, dress right, and then launch the boat at 10 in the morning and fish from 10 to 4 in the afternoon. And I like to fish shallow, and I fish the stumps, I fish the creeks, and follow the creeks, um, and I fish the stumps that are on the edges of the creeks. And sometimes I'm a real good one trend a day, they're all the way back. And sometimes, you know, maybe they're middle, middle grounds. But you got to go looking for them, and you got to remember, you know, you're going to pitch jigs, you're going to pitch Texas rigs um, to the stumps. And, and sometimes they're visible stumps, depending on the water level. When the water's up high, you're not seeing all the stumps that are there. Um, so you either go by experience, GPS marks, the stumps that you've marked in the past, side scan and make marks. Um, I've got a lot of, you know, every creek that I go up, Birch Creek, Glade Creek, um, Dale Creek, Williams Creek. When I go up the middle of those creeks, when the lake was eight feet low, I was marking lots of stumps. And, and so now when I go to those creeks, I can see on my sonar, hey, the Jeep, there's a stump there. There's one of those good stumps with roots. And, and I fish accordingly. But Texas rig, creature baits, Texas rig, chopsticks, which is a Senko, um, just Texas rig worms. You know, you can really go catch fish. Drop shotting a lot of times is another great one. Drop shotting and pitching to those stumps can catch you a lot of fish. Um, in the afternoon, doing the warm trend happens. Uh, on the cold days, like I think I said, go hunting. Go deer hunting, go duck hunting, stay at home on the couch, um, do something different. Um, and then again, sometimes in the right place, we're still not, we haven't hit cold, cold yet. So you might run into some shallow schooling fish. Um, if you do chatterbaits, spinnerbaits, square meals might catch those. You're going to know because you're going to see the activity. You're going to see the bait fish. You're going to see birds, most likely, seagulls, blue herons, things like that, white egrets in the area. They'll be fishing. They'll be catching bait. Um, but that will be all about bait sources. Um, not so much the sun and sunbathing and warm water, warmer water. Water temperature in the main lake is 53, 55. If you can go in the back of a creek and find it where it's warmed up to 57 or 59 or even you know 60 somewhere in the back of a calm, sheltered creek, you likely might have some catchable fish in that creek. All right, so that's basically what I got for you publicly. Um, there are a lot of lakes around the vicinity here that are fishing really good right now, um, aside from fork. So if you don't want to go grind out on fork, you don't care about catching a big giant fish, you just want to catch fish and have fun, there are several lakes in the area that have vegetation, lots of vegetation, and, and um, I'll leave it at that. Those lakes are actually fishing very good, um, fishing the grass, fishing the edges of the grass. Um, you can catch a whole lot of fish on, on a few of those lakes. If you want to know what those lakes are, if you want to know more information, a little more detail than I've given you here about fork or just a lot more broader fishing report in general, then look, this is your invite to come subscribe to my members only channel. It's really simple. Look in the description below this video. When you finish watching the video, click out, look in the description below, click on members, go follow the procedure. It's very simple to become a member. Um, in the members channel, I give a lot more detail. I give the baits, the colors, the exact where to, the how to, and I have five other guides that give me the juice, the good information on Lake Tawakini, on Lake Hubbard, on Levon, on Possum Kingdom, on... Um, um, O.H. Ivy, on Lake Athens, on Lake Welsh, um, on, um, um, what's the one down south for some reason, I'm, Palestine. So I really get the juice, and, and, and from those five awesome guides, Stripers and White Bass on, on Tawakini, and even Crappie and Catfish reports. So if you're wanting more, please come subscribe. We'd love to have you be a member. Big shout out to Lake Fork Marina. Jamie's Restaurant as well, inside Lake Fork Marina. Um, J Hot Chevrolet, TIFR, and on and on and on. There's so many great sponsors. Abu Garcia and Berkeley and 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 man, I just I can't even tell you. Santo Lures and as we always say, um, this the support is absolutely phenomenal, um, and I'm so grateful. So thank you for watching. Hope you have a great weekend fishing, um, and I hope you catch a big one. All right, thanks again.